you bring it clear, you want? Yeah. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. So first of all, do you mind if we record anything? Record everything. Oh, sure, okay. sure. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you a lot for this interview that you wanted to do this uh, with us. Yeah. yeah. We're really glad. And um, it, it's going to help us a lot. So we have a few questions. Uh, we have a lot of questions we want to ask you. And if you don't mind, like, if you mind any of the questions, you can just, like, b decide to not answer them. I don't but... think I've ever said I won't answer a question. So go ahead. Okay. Shoot. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, um, so, yeah. Yeah, let's, so, so I'm, I'm Jorn. And I'm Joel. Partner Joel in the, in the project, yes. What, and, and, sorry, what, what country are you guys from? Holland. Holland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right on. Yeah, so uh, we live just below Amsterdam. So um, yeah, the conference was in Amsterdam, the Flatter Conference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we were there like in uh, really quick. It was a short travel. Good. So that was really cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we have this project uh, we need to do for school. It's just a really big project at the end of the year. And we do it about Flat Earth, yeah. 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 What, what, uh, what school? Alcuin Collation. It's a, it's a hard name. Maybe you can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Type it in. Type it in uh, into Skype. Oh yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, Dutch is a hard language. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, how can I open the chat? Oh yeah, here. But, um, the chat. Gonna. Because when people okay. ask, I'll be like, "Who are you? Who are you talking to?" It's like I don't know, some Holland guys. Yeah, the Holland guys who do the flat Earth <laughs> project. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you can manage group, nay. I, I, I can um, send it on my phone, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can send it on your send phone. It, send it to Skype, though, if you're going to do it. So it's like, oh, you're typing. Oh, yeah, you're typing right now. Oh, yes. Okay, I, I got it, I got it. Yeah. All, all Quinn College, got it. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's case. not a college, but it's, uh, it's a high school, it's, right? It's a high school, yeah. 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 Got it. Okay, so um, the first question. Yeah. Um, should we start with this question? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Um, what's your best argument for the flat earth theory? Best argument for the flat earth theory is probably the easiest one. Uh, the one at the top of the most people's list is long distance photography. Meaning when you look off into the distance, there is a formula for the earth's curvature, which is eight inches per mile squared. I'm not going to do it for metric for you guys because I don't know what that would be. Uh, oh, and so there should be objects that are on the other side of the curve that you cannot see ever. Yeah. And yeah. to, to date, we have never found an object within reason, of course, you know, because after about 150 miles, the atmosphere gets so thick, you know, compounds because you're, what we're breathing in is only about 99% transparent. Um, I, I put the challenge, I go to ch to anyone in science and go find me an object. I don't know, 150 or miles or less that you can never, ever, ever see. And what's interesting about that is I, I didn't come up with that. When I did the Flat Earth Clues, I never brought up long distance photography. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know the, the curvature of the Earth formula. So people just started running to the beaches, lakes and canals and, and oceans started taking long distance shots. And there you go. That's that's probably the best argument. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like a long sides, long distance. Yeah, so um, this is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. So how did this community get so big with all the... Um, of course, we have the Flat Earth Society, which is a controlled opposition, we learned. Yeah. Right? And is it, that true? Conference? Well, it, it is and it isn't. At the, because we, okay. you, can't, you can't prove it one way or the other. Um, at the very, at the wor in the worst case scenario, it's uh, some sort of controlled opposition because they seem to just turn people away from the flat earth on a regular basis and have never gotten involved in the new community. At yeah. best, even if you give them the benefit of the doubt, they're completely apathetic, which doesn't make any damn sense. I mean, the first flat earth society member that contacted me was at probably middle or end of 2016. And... Uh, I, they were, you know, said, oh yeah, we support what you do. And it's like, where have you guys been? We've just been tearing up the internet and you, you have no presence. I mean, we've had, we're, we're working on our third international conference this year in the United States. They have, they're not coming. So yeah, yeah. not, not a big event. Anyway, to, to the answer to your first question though, how it got so big and I'll send yeah. you after this, I'll send you the, uh, the audio book. Uh, Cause actually the, my, my second book, which is called 
da, 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 flat earth clues end of the world um yes it is uh it's actually a retrospective on how we got there it's it actually spends quite okay. a bit of time okay. answering that question which is how we got there and it's a combination of organic growth and media spikes so every once in a while so there's this organic growth where people it resonates with a lot of people and then you get these media spikes you know some celebrity will do something and mention flat earth whether it be yeah. in, in sports or um entertainment or something like that um but what the the big reason why you want to talk about why it resonates is we've created a version of explaining the world which is a lot easier to understand than this the globe our yeah. version our version is so much easier to understand and people just gravitate towards no, no play on words there uh they gravitate towards the easiest answer so um there's a wonderful uh quote in sun tzu the art of war uh, which is people are like water they always take the path of least resistance and it's very yeah. very true it's the nice way of saying that people are lazy so if if our version of the world is easier to understand than this that's what they're going to go with and they have in droves unless you have i don't know at least a bachelor's degree in a physical science you're going to get it and which is why our retention rate is so high that's that's the other thing if you once you get into flat earth we have a 99 percent retention rate and that's higher than any organization ever in the history of organizations people even if you wanted to go back and i don't want to use the matrix quotes too many times um, but even if you could go back to a globe, you can't because getting into flat earth means you already tore it down. You yourself tried to tear down flat earth and in the process tore down the globe. So going back to the globe, you'd have to rebuild it from scratch in your own mind. Tough to do. So there you go. So you would never go back to the globe. Like I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how it would be possible. Um, yeah, I mean, one of your questions might be, is there anything that science could do to prove the globe to me? Yeah. To absolutely yeah. could prove to the globe. Yeah, there's two things you could do. Um, one costs money and the other doesn't cost so much money. Uh, the first one would be to take any launch anywhere, attach a 4K camera to it, make sure it's on the top capsule, not any of these first or second stages, which they tend to do. 4K camera, turn it on, do not turn it off, do not edit it and give us the footage. You know, just give make us give us access to it. It's never been done in the history of space travel, which statistically should be impossible. You know, kind of like why there's no astronaut shot of an astronaut doing a 360 with the camera running. How does that never happen? Uh, but but an easy way, yeah, would be a 4K camera, put it on a rocket. But if you don't, don't want to do the rocket, because people say you got to come up with something easier than that, and that's one of the things they do is come up with easy ways to explain things, is. Um, uh, the spacesuit challenge, which I came up with, because spacesuits defy thermal dynamics, meaning pressure needs a container, and a spacesuit should turn into a basketball or a football or whatever you call it over there. It should go as tight as a drum and then explode. Uh, that's a vacuum is nothing to be trifled with. You can look it up on YouTube all day long. Uh, look up something called um, steel rail car versus vacuum. That shows you how quick and violent Hollywood is absolutely did. The movies get it wrong with a lot of different things, but the vacuum is they absolutely get it wrong. Like there's a little hole in a space capsule, right? That's like, oh my God, we only have three minutes of air left. It's like, uh, no, yeah. you have three tenths of a second. <laughs> it's that yeah, fast yeah. and it's that violent. You know, <clears throat> oh, wow. Having Ripley from Aliens hold on to the handle as, as the vacuum is like, no, no, her arm yeah. would be torn off if she could even hold on at all. Um, so my spacesuit challenge basically says, get me a spacesuit from any era, from, from NASA, from the 1960s to now, put me into a vacuum chamber and pull the switch. Tell me how I don't die. And it's impossible. Tell me what magical technology stops the vacuum of space. I don't care about oxygen levels or CO2 levels or nitrogen or heating and cooling. All I care about is how it stops the vacuum of space. And I'll, I'll give you one more real quick. It's an easy way to explain it to people. It's like, okay... Because they say, um, what keeps our atmosphere on, right? They say it's gravity, right? I go, okay, yeah. fine. Let's, is there a second floor to your building right now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Right. Let's say you turn the second floor into a vacuum chamber and you had a cork right above you and you popped it, right? What's going to happen? You know it's going to happen. It's instantly going to you know, equalize. You're probably going to black out. You might even die. And my question to you is, why didn't the gravity in your room keep the air down? Well, because it's the vacuum. It's like, okay, yeah. so how does the vacuum of space keep keep 
you know, stay, stay up there? How does it to, to, to stay separated? Because the exact same gravity, the exact same gravity. And no one can ever explain it. Ask any scientist, where is the bleeding edge of space? Where does our atmosphere end and space begin? And the reason why, sorry, not to drag this out too much, but one of the reasons, the reasons why NASA and the space programs and science as a whole has gotten away with they have gotten away with over the years is because the average person on the streets, not going to say they're dumb, the average person remembers entertainment based media. They can tell you football ratings. They can tell you all the cast members of Game of Thrones. They can tell you all these other fun things. They know nothing about mathematics or physics or engineering. And if you don't know any of those three things at all, you can tell people anything and then they'll buy it, which is why the Americans got away with the Apollo program. It's absolutely theater, utter theater. It's no different than Hollywood. I mean, anyone in the right mind should know that Ripley's going to be sucked out of the airlock and die. But because they are shown it on film, oh, she's holding on. It must be real. Yeah. Uh, suspension mm -hmm. of disbelief is a powerful thing. Anyway, go ahead. Um. So the internet has a lot of uh, a lot to do with the spread of the flat Earth theory, right? Yes, YouTube Just... especially. YouTube mostly, YouTube. actually. Okay. Yeah. In fact, YouTube mm -hmm. YouTube has become the largest television network in the world. And quietly, if they have done this, and most people don't even notice. I mean, forget about the major networks or even Netflix, you know, groups like that. They have nothing in the way of content compared to YouTube. YouTube, every, from what I heard, this, this could be probably old information. Every minute of every day, YouTube uploads 80 hours of content, which means you will yeah. never finish in your multiple lifetimes, even a fraction yeah. of what's on YouTube. So yeah, YouTube and Remember, YouTube also allows you to look up anything. People say, well, oh, no, YouTube, you can't get your information off YouTube. It's like, really? Because if you want to do automotive repair, you can find it out on YouTube. If you want to make the perfect omelet, you can find it out on YouTube. I mean, there's a lot of useful information out there. Where, What is useful and what is not? That's where things get kind of blurry. Mm. Um, what was your first reaction uh, when you heard of the Flat Earth Theory? That it was ridiculous. That it was stupid. Uh, in fact, I rolled my eyes at it and said this, oh, because everybody knows this is, what I love about flat earth is everybody knows the term I have yet to run into after thousands, thousands of people never run into anyone that said once they heard it, it's like, what? Never heard of it. Everyone knows and everyone hates it. In fact, me being a conspiracy guy, it's not even a conspiracy for most conspiracy people. It's like, oh, that dumb story. You know, it's like everybody, but it's like, it's like, well, in ancient cultures, we believed the earth was flat well, because we didn't know any better. And now we know it's a globe. Right. And so that's, yeah. When the, my first reaction was utter repulsion. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll take it one step further. Literally. I'm not kidding you. When I say this, the first flat earth video I clicked on, I got a visceral response to it. I actually blushed because I was clicking on it. I was like embarrassed mm -hmm. to click on it. And I was in my house alone with the drapes pulled, right? You guys are young. You know what's on the internet. There's a lot of weird stuff that people click on on the internet. Nothing <laughs> shocks me, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, there's websites. Man, I shouldn't be on that site. That's a lot of naked happening there. And, but and yet, no, that doesn't embarrass anybody, right? It's, we don't get shocked. Why, and I, I caught myself. It's like, why am I actually getting embarrassed over this stupid video? It's because of the conditioning. We see, you see this for your entire school career. Yeah. And that is classic conditioning. It's like, oh yeah, it's where we live. It's where we live. And then all of a sudden the first time it's like, maybe it's not where we live. Your mind just recoils. So. Mm, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So when did you first learn about flat earth? What was the, when was your first experience? Uh, 2014 summer of 2014 um i mean of course you you've, we've heard about it our whole life you know we you've heard yeah. seen images yeah but the first time i even knew it was a, a concept that i could delve into was the summer of 2014 it was a german video named um channel it was called cesar he was talking about flight routes in the southern hemisphere and I, I didn't understand German, but I knew what he was kind of getting at with the graphics and it was subtitled. It's like, yeah, it's kind of interesting. And by the end, he's going, look, he's not necessarily saying he was a flat earther. He's saying, but the flight routes don't make any sense unless the earth is a dinner plate. I thought, huh, that's kind of an interesting story. And so that's, you know, that's what kind of got me into it. And then I was looking at a Canadian video by a guy named Matt Boylan, who was talking about, um, 
how he worked for NASA. I don't think he actually worked for NASA. I think he worked for a guy who worked for NASA. Uh, but he was, he was talking about different things about how the, the world might be flat. And I thought, oh, this is really interesting. You know, I'm going to spend a couple days. Shoot it down. Why not? You know, on my bucket list. Should be able to knock this thing out. And then nine months later, in uh, February of 2015, that's when I looked at it. Or, you know, put the video out to everybody. I, I just made a s series of uh, videos and I said, okay, I can't prove the globe anymore in a court of law. Tell me where I'm wrong. Here's my name. Here's my phone number. Go get me. And just waiting, waiting, waiting for the phone call. And the first calls I got weren't against Flat Earth. In fact, the first 50 calls, the first 100 calls weren't against Flat Earth. Uh, they were all, in fact, the, when the subject matter experts started calling me up from military and engineers and surveyors and all this, they kept saying the same thing, which was, you know what? It's not that crazy. You know, we've all heard about the curve. We all heard about the spinning of the earth. We don't use the, the calculations in our daily lives. And so, in fact, to this day, I have yet to find even someone to rebuttal those professions or any of those guys recant. None of these guys came back and said, nah, I was wrong. They all, they all held their ground, which is, again, amazing. So. Wow, yeah. Um, what is for, uh, for you, besides the flat earth theory, the most believable conspiracy theory? We know that um, a lot of conspiracy theories like um, uh, make sense when you believe in the flat earth. Right. But what's the most believable? Or the, the first one you... First one that yeah. comes to mind? I mean, again, I, I'm, I'm a little unusual because I believe i i had my i have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of i love some some i don't like i mean do i think that elvis is alive and had bigfoot's baby probably not um but do i think that 9 11 was probably an inside job uh, yeah sure i mean people do look every just about every war you can think of in in any country but especially in the united states everyone wants to come out the other side of that war as the good guys and the United States is always been trying to, you know, wear the white hat. Um, so probably the most obvious one, because we, we catch so much flack because like 9-11 people have accused us of like distracting them from, from they consider the ultimate conspiracy is 9-11. Um, yeah, probably 9-11 probably because I like to boil down conspiracies into uh, one or two sentences. It's like for 9-11, I'd be like, okay. Um, you want me to approve 9-11 real quick? Building 7. Plain and simple. Building 7 didn't get hit by a plane. And a small fire started in the bottom. There was no structural damage. And the thing just gave up its will to live five hours later for no apparent reason. It was a 50-story building. And it literally just collapsed at free fall speed. I happen to know a lot about demolition and explosives. <laughs> I know. You watch documentaries on how buildings go down. It takes them weeks, if not months, to bring down any size building. And yeah, you cannot build, bring a building down by setting a fire. If it was, if you could bring a building down by setting a fire, no one would. Their demolition teams wouldn't exist. They just set fires in the basement, walk away, and it's like, oh, five <laughs> hours later, this is gone. Um, regional, regional conspiracies. I love, I love conspiracies. Conspiracies are are just mysteries that haven't been solved yet, in in most yeah. cases. And once they have, in fact, the media, for example, um, just to go off on a side road. The media covers conspiracies all the time, but they never use the words. So, like, for example, um, if it's financial, in most cases, or, uh, or it's sex involved, it's called a scandal. They never call it a conspiracy, even though, by definition, if three or more people are involved in any sort of crime, it's a conspiracy, legally. I mean, people get charged with conspiracy every day in court. Um, and if people die, it's called a tragedy. But they never call it a conspiracy. It's, it's fascinating to me. Um, I, I even, uh, uh, real quick, I'll, uh, I even was a big fan. Uh, I even coined my own conspiracy. I, I, I created a conspiracy that nobody else backed. You want to hear it? Yeah, yeah okay. sure. It's called the Panama Canal. You're saying Panama <laughs> Canal is not a conspiracy. Doesn't that, that can't be possible. I even covered it in the book. I go, yes, it is. By definition, it is a conspiracy. Here's why. Um, think of any major engineering project you guys have over there, dams, buildings, people die in these things all the time, especially if yeah. you're pouring concrete, I'm talking about blue collar workers doing dumb things on a regular basis. Um, like we have a Hoover dam over here, big, big dam. Uh, I think like 70 people died making it, you know, this was back in the thirties and forties considered, considered acceptable losses. Compare that to the Panama canal, which was really just a ditch, really, really long ditch between two oceans, right? You know how many people died in the making of that? 
no, better, no better part of 6,000. So, and really? Thinking, yeah, and you're thinking, wow, uh, it's kind of a lot. But here's, here, watch. I'll, your heads will nod automatically when I say this, ready? And then I'll tell you how they die, right? I'll say, yeah, but they died from malaria and yellow fever. And you're immediately thinking, oh, of course, yeah, they died from mosquitoes, right? That's, that's what happens. So I say, okay, and you're, and you're saying that's not a conspiracy. I go, well, what if I told you the Americans knew full well that they were going to lose 6,000 guys? And they sent them anyway. And you're going, that's a stretch. And I go, okay. Uh, you got to remember, we didn't start the Panama Canal. You know who did? France. France got over there in the late 1800s. And they tried to do it because France was still sort of a power player back then. And they thought this strategically was a great thing. You know how many men yeah. they lost? Over 20,000. And they lost so many people that eventually they had to abandon the project because the, the people back in Paris were just protesting to, to high heaven because it's like, oh my God, you guys are killing a lot of guys over there. So the France yeah. just put down their shovels, went back. The Americans came back in, invented bug spray and mosquito netting and still lost 6,000 guys. So you're saying, what's the conspiracy? My conspiracy is during the recruiting process, remember this was not military. These were all civilians. These were all engineers and blue collar people. During the recruiting process, do you tell the people that are going down to do the Panama Canal they've got like a one in eight chance of dying? No, you do not. Because you won't be able to get workers. And you hide that fact as much as possible. That, by definition, is a conspiracy. So, look, there's, there's sanctioned conspiracies and there's non-sanctions. The ones that the news put out there, that's the ones they endorse. Enron, this massive financial scandal over the United States, that was a conspiracy. Um, but they don't call it. They call it the Enron scandal. JFK was considered a conspiracy because technically it's unsolved and people keep thinking there are more than one person involved. Even though JFK was ridiculous because it was a lone gunman who was then in turn killed by a lone gunman. Silly. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. I ramble. Um, yeah, it's totally fine. It's uh, it's really interesting what you have to say. But um, yeah. we heard of a, cons a conspiracy um, about 666. Um, oh, sure. And Flat Earth, do you believe in it? And can you maybe explain us what it is? Because we haven't had... Oh, okay, uh, well, we 666, yeah. a, a rich, and I'm not going to be able to quote chapter and verse here. Uh, that was taken, you know, from the Bible. He who hath number, you know, understanding, uh, recognizes the number of the beast, which is... 666 they don't say they they add the numbers together um the the there there is a little 666 tie-in to flat earth but actually it was just or it was just a side thing um and that was one of the early flat earth maps uh which was made by orlando ferguson uh was kind of shaped like a roulette table which was interesting and i and i i recognize it. you look at the orlando ferguson map and it's kind of kind of bulgy in the center if you know what a roulette table looks like it's you took all the numbers yeah. off it it looks like that and people immediately got a hold of me and said well you can't use roulette table you can't say roulette table like why not and they go because if you add up all the numbers in a roulette table they add up to 666 ah okay and it's okay. absolutely true because <laughs> i had to look that up it's like wow what are the odds of that that you know one of the like the gambling icons has that built into it but so yeah after that i stopped saying roulette table and said like hubcap but then that was squashed because people not because it was a hubcap because people i said there might be some bulges to it and people said no it's absolutely tabletop flat and that's when we started doing long distance photography so, mm. so does the number 666 uh come up anywhere else in the theory uh no no, 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 no. 666 is, is, I mean, it comes up in a lot of little things here and there. I mean, you can go online and type in Google 666 in the world and you'll oh, find, yeah. find stuff. I mean, stuff you'll see it in stuff like most often corporate icons. Um, so, for example, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, the 666, the, there have been a couple references in Flat Earth, but it's not in a Flat Earth. It's like the tilt of the globe. And I, I'm not going to, I'm going to butcher this right. Uh, and that is, you know, it's got a tilt of 23.3 .3 degrees, give or take. Uh, so if you subtract that from the 90, it, I think it comes out to 66.6 .6 degrees, which is, uh, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is not, it's not exactly 666, but that's kind of interesting. Other little 666s I could throw in there without actually typing something um, would be like, look at the Disney logo and find you know there's three sixes actually built into the disney um the word disney when you type in disney into google you know there one one is backwards but they're obvious sixes um 
the same thing with uh, other. Again, type in if you want to have some fun. Just type in six 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 and corporate logos. You will see a bunch of them built in. It's it's kind of okay. it's kind of cool. So mm, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, um. So do um people that believe in the flat Earth theory um do they uh yeah. Uh, uh, do they believe in other conspiracy theories because it all comes together like real? Oh yeah, yeah. Go... If you if once you get into flat Earth, you are open to just about every conspiracy. You have to revisit just about every conspiracy. Now, does any other conspiracy that other than flat Earth jump over? You know, to take first place? No. Flat Earth is physically the biggest conspiracy we can think of because it is the world. Uh, the yeah. only the other conspiracy bigger would be stuff we haven't even delved into, which would be uh, why are we here, the nature of God, uh, and what yeah. happens when we die, that that sort of stuff. But everything else falls literally underneath the umbrella of of flat Earth. So, yeah, I mean the, the obvious ones. People look at at nine eleven. Um, they look at false flag shootings. They look at uh, I mean for me like JFK, Pearl Harbor, every American war. Uh, even, even little things like it was something I was delving into recently. Like, like here's a perfect example and you can have some fun with this. Um, you've heard of like the Loch Ness monster, right? Yeah. Of yeah, yeah. Right. Of course. Right. There's the dinosaurs. Are there dinosaurs living in a lake, you know, in the UK? And initially you'd say, well, no, no, that's impossible. And I'd say, why? You say, well, dinosaurs died out at least a hundred million years ago. Yeah. Right? They've been gone for a very, 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 very long time. I say, really? I go, well, look up a fish called the coelacanth. C-O-E-L-A-C-A-N-T-H, the coelacanth fish. You can look at the fossil record, and yeah, it, it was dead for 70 million years, right? Mm. Was, was dead and for 70 million years yeah. until they caught one off the coast of South Africa and then Mozambique and then Madagascar. And then finally, National Geographic just sent scuba divers down and started swimming with them. And it's like, okay, uh, every scientist in the world would have bet their careers that this thing was dead, dead, dead. And it wasn't. It was absolutely alive. So how did science screw up that badly? Uh, because once they saw the fossil record, they said, well, that's it. Because we know everything from that fossil record is gone. And then they had to start making up brand new terms for this stupid fish, which was they called it a living fossil. Brilliant. <laughs> And then they said it was in an evolutionary state of stasis, meaning it wasn't evolving right now, but maybe it'll evolve in the future. Yeah. So then I come back to you again and I say, are there dinosaurs swimming around in Loch Ness? And you say, what? No, because what? They've been dead for 100 million years. My point is, is that fish, which you can't catch with a rod and reel, had been any more elusive, we'd still be calling it a myth right now. Uh, every, in fact, science, the part that bugs me about science more than anything is they absolutely say that they are right until they are wrong, and then they claim it for science. The giant panda was a myth. The giant anaconda was a myth. The giant squid, by the way, we've still never caught one, but we know they're there because we found their skulls inside sperm whales after we caught them. Yeah. But they're so deep, we can't, even our best subs cannot catch these things. Well, you could send the entire military after a giant squid. You're never getting it. Just unless you use atomic weapons and good luck finding the pieces after that. So don't. And so here's here's the part that bugs me. If all of a sudden uh, uh, a plesiosaur was found dead on the beach in Loch Ness. Yeah. Science would immediately just claim you know, they would come up for a re with a reason for that. They would never apologize for it. But up until then, everybody that says they've seen a plesiosaur in Loch Ness is obviously crazy. So my, my quote is, I, I'm sorry, I go off on a rant here, but you'll get what I'm seeing, what I mean in yeah. a second. Neil deGrasse Tyson said the most arrogant thing I've ever heard in my life, which is science is true whether or not you believe in it. And so when I come back and, and I say, okay, fine, uh, the boiling temperature of water at sea level, you guys can test that right now. That's easy. Tell me what the core of the earth looks like. And then you do some research and you realize that the deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles. So why is science showing us all these wonderful cross sections? And so it's exactly what it looks like, even though in the small print, the fine print, they say we don't have a freaking clue. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, what are your stances on uh, climate change and vaccinations? Okay. Climate, uh, very different points, but um, climate change for me, uh, I think exists. But I, but I, but I, for me, it, I like it because it works better in a flat model, meaning 
if we are living in a building, an enclosed world, you know, with a dome and walls and a floor and a ceiling, uh, does that make more sense? You know, if, if we're talking about greenhouse gases, doesn't that work a little better if it's an actual physical greenhouse? Maybe. Mm. Um, if it's not, if it's cyclical, that's fine. I'm not going to lose any sleep about it. Do I think there's been some climate change? By the way, it used to be called global warming. Yes, you no. Know, and all those temperature things, I don't think are an accident. Uh, I'm up here in Seattle where, where it can get pretty wet and cold and windy. And last Halloween, I was getting a tan here. And I shouldn't have been. I should have, yeah. I should have been just drenched or dying of exposure. Uh, so do I think climate change is real? Yeah, but only because, only because of the flat earth. If it wasn't a flat earth, I'd think it was some, it was something else. Um, vaccinations, boy, that's a, that's a touchy one. Um, but what I try to tell people is this, um, the autism rate, and this is for anybody in science, the autism rate in, at least in the United States, I can't speak for other countries has gone up to basically near epidemic levels. We've gone from one in 10,000 to one in 40 which is mm -hmm. off the freaking charts. And so when somebody says, and so when somebody on the news says, well, we don't know what causes that. It's like, it doesn't matter if you don't know because the public is going to find something. And remember, we're talking about something that's so big that it can only be one of several things, right? It's gotta be either air, food, or water, or something medical, right? Well, it can't be air, cause that's regional. It can't be uh, water, also regional. And it can't be food, because that's ridiculous. I mean, people, there's different diets all over the place, and we would have figured that out by now. Um, so when, and, and I mean, I don't know if you guys watch Vaxxed or any of the vaccination documentaries or anything like that, but mm -hmm. we, I mean, we boiled it down. We know what it is. It's the MMR. You know, it's the, um, it's the triple vaccine, which is the measles, mumps, and, and German measles, otherwise known as uh, rubella. And when, there's, when, you, when you get a dose of these separately, seems, things seem to be fine. But when you get a triple dose in infants under the age of 18 months, there seems to be a huge increase, uptick in what we call kind of like a forced autism, where they go into seizures. I mean, it's videotaped nowadays. It's not like it's word of mouth. I mean, seriously, go on YouTube and type in autism vaccinations. So you can get through like 30 minutes worth of videos without kind of going, uh, something really bad here. These parents aren't lying. These parents are really, really upset. It's like child's good, child's good, child's good. Vaccination, child is a train wreck. So do I think that the vaccinations are an issue? Yeah, I do. Now, does that mean I don't believe in vaccinations? No, of course not. You know, we, we vaccinations have done great things over the years. Um, yeah. But if, here's, here's the problem. It comes down to, at least in the States, it comes down to lawyers' rules, which is we protect our corporate interests. The vaccinations are made by private companies and lawyers, they all say the same thing. And that is deny, deny, deny until they absolutely have you and only then admit guilt because the class action lawsuit for something like this would be monstrous. It would absolutely be huge. And so any, co any company that admits to any being part of this, that's it. The, co the company's gone. That's it. And you're talking about a lot of people and a lot of stockholders. I mean, it's the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Uh, people forget, not to go off on a, a quick side note, that big tobacco, um, you know, cigarettes over here. Yeah. Big tobacco didn't lose because uh, families filed this class action lawsuit against big tobacco. It wasn't families versus big the cigarettes. It was the health insurance companies. The health insurance companies kept, didn't like paying for lung cancer. So they were the ones that got their own doctors and it was health insurance versus pig tobacco, big money versus big money. That's the only reason the cigarette guys backed off is because it was, it was heavy hitters. Autism doesn't have that sort of luxury. Autism is literally the parents. And so I don't know where it's going to end. Um, maybe when enough congressmen's grandchildren have it because one in 40, I mean, I know people, I, you know, it's, it's where now I'll give you a quick example. I was on a flight this, this year. And I was, and they don't fly very often. Autistic kids, you don't let them on planes very often for various reasons, and I'll tell you why. There was a kid there, he must have been 13, 14, and he walked off the plane because he didn't like the way the bathroom smelled. I mean, literally walked off the plane as parents chasing him off the plane. You gotta remember, if he had made it to the freaking gate, that was it. You know, the, he wouldn't be allowed back on the plane, and it took him like 20 minutes. The plane was delayed because, you know, they had to convince him to come back on the plane. And yeah, this, okay. this, ha and this, not an isolated incident. This happens more and more. It's, it's a, it's a big deal. Anyway, sorry. Oh no, that's fine. It's totally fine. Um, 
What do you think the the stars are and the moon and the sun, of course? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, everything except for the sun and the moon are just little lights in the sky on some high definition, ultra ultra high definition projection system. Um, when it comes to the sun and the moon, they're part of the the the, the lights in the sky too. They're just much more interactive. I mean, the sun would be considered uh, an incandescent light bulb and the moon a very, very cool laser or a cool LED. And I didn't even think that was a thing until the end of 2016, where, or the end of 2015, 2015, sorry, where uh, somebody told me, I don't know if you knew this, that the moon generates a cold light. And I, I thought that doesn't even make sense to me. And it's like, yeah, if you, in fact, you can test it out yourself. So um, with one of these damn things, a little point and click, here we go. So um, point and click infrared thermometer you can buy for like 20 bucks. So, uh, and again, I won't convert it to Celsius for you, but you'll get it. Um, so if it's 90 degrees in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade because whatever object it is blocks some of the rays. So it's cooler in the shade, right? In the moonlight, yeah. it's the exact opposite. Meaning if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's up to 60, 63 degrees in the moon shade. It's like the end. And I'm going, that's, that's not possible, you know, because remember the moon supposedly reflecting the sun's light. So at the very least it should yeah. be neutral. It should never, ever go negative. And not only that, but if you magnify moonlight, it even gets colder. We had to look up this technology to see what the hell was going on. It's something you can do in university. It's called a cold laser. Meaning you can change the frequency, you can tweak the frequency of a laser and actually cool things down. I mean, not like you can't make ice cubes out of a laser beam, obviously, but you can make things actually colder. And so does that prove a flat earth? No, it doesn't. But it absolutely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon, which yeah. basically means the, the moon is self-illuminating. The sun is self-illuminating. Um, are they three-dimensional or two-dimensional? I don't know. Hard to say. It depends what you're looking at. I mean, if you're looking at it from a physical standpoint, maybe they're two dimensional or maybe three dimensional. But if you're looking at it from a simulation standpoint, then they're two dimensional. Because if we're talking something virtual, yeah, yeah. which is very, very possible, if you know anything about programming, you know the basically the the sky in programming is just a big box. It's literally called in programming it's called a sky box, and you simulate everything up there as if it was curved, if everything was spherical. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, so, what do you think the the model is from the flat Earth? You think it's uh like a a, a dome, right? Yeah. I yeah. so I I think it'd be like so. Imagine. Okay, imagine a giant box, a giant Hollywood building, massive in scale, right? And inside of that, you have a saltwater lake giant saltwater lake and inside that you have little islands which would be our continents um is there a dome on top of it probably but at the very edges it would have to be some some sort of square box because engineering deals in squares engineering really hates circles in fact computers can't do most people know computers don't know what to do with circles They're, that's why pixels are always square you know, if you zoom in on any circle, eventually you're just going to yeah. get a bunch of jagged lines. Yes. Yeah, we just get better. Computers literally don't know how to do it. And in fact, we don't even know how to tell them how to do it. Um, but yeah, is there some sort of dome? Best we can tell, yeah. Uh, is it curved? Certainly looks like it. Look at um, time-lapse photography of any NASA launch ever, where it just goes horizontal almost immediately. It goes up and it goes a really, really shallow. Now, do I think that the arc of the dome is like a snow globe? No, nah, probably not. More like a shallow sports stadium doesn't have to be that high compared to the width. I mean, this thing would be over 20,000 miles wide, but the height, uh, you remember most commercial airlines cap out at about 10 miles. Spy planes, if you believe what they say, maybe 20 miles. So even if you had a dome that was only 100 miles high, more than high enough to encapsule a civilization. Mm. And the sun and the moon are in this dome, right? It certainly or looks like it. I mean, okay. again, if it was manufactured, if it was if it was built by a structure, then yeah, it would be. An, now, could it be right outside of it? Yeah, possible, but I don't think it would be as efficient. Uh, I mean, again, for me, I I'm a big because I come from the software background. I believe in the virtual world that simulates a physical world, uh, which I don't think is is in any conflict with with flat Earth. But do I think the sun and the moon are inside the structure? Yep, yep, I do. Mm. And um, what do you think created the structure? No, <laughs> I'm going to go right to that. Uh, that's a big question. I know, I know people, I know you're asking, it's like, ah, who made it? It's like, well, it's kind of, kind of a big question. Um, it can only yeah. be one of two things. 
it could either be okay. the um, an advanced civilization that's much older and much more powerful than ourselves. Uh, take take your pick there, or it is the divine. But really, at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs because an advanced civilization would be almost indistinguishable from a divine power. You know, if something yeah. something landed in a giant golden spaceship and a ten foot tall blue guy came out and he was glowing, uh, there'd be churches popping up immediately, pledging allegiance to the blue guy. Uh, by the way, you can only have whoever comes out, you know, whoever reveals themselves to be the builder has to be better looking than us. I know that because otherwise it wouldn't be taken seriously. We've, we've done so much with science fiction. There's only, in fact, they can only be like one of only three colors because you can't use any colors we've had down here for obvious reasons. You know, we'd have race problems. Uh, so they can, and they can't be green because green's considered you gross. Can't be red because that'd be demonic. So it could only be like avatar blue, silver, gold. Or some sort of glowing color, but even then, you you have uh, very limited choices. So, yeah, that's really interesting. It's kind of like just um, the theory. If you believe in the in a round Earth, it's, it's kind of the same. Like it's or it's like the Big Bang, or it's God, or it's oh yeah, uh, an massive lesage. So it's pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Is there uh, the possibility that you... Oh, uh, I asked that already. Oh, yeah, yeah we did. Uh, uh, many models of the flat Earth tell us that Antarctica is a big wall of ice. Right. And behind the wall, there are supposed to be other unexplored continents. Sure. Um, do you believe that or not? I do. Uh, the only question is, can we get to them or not? Uh, so how... Yeah. It's kind of a two-part question. One is how, how thick is Antarctica? I mean, it's got to be thousands of miles at least thick, much, much thicker than what you see uh, on the maps or even the flat earth maps. Uh, because if the United States military and the Soviets were you know probing for the edge for the better part of 30 years, granted, they didn't have jets back then. Uh, they had prop planes, but still 30 years, you can do a lot of flying with refueling stations. They couldn't find it. Now, could it be the the big question is, are the continents lying outside of the dome structure and and that leads into a whole nother series of questions which is okay can are we allowed to get there or are we sealed in uh and then then another series of questions which is you know why would we be sealed in a uh, couple couple answers there which would be are we a box of kittens which should be protected from what's outside or are we a box of scorpions that should never ever be let out for any circumstances well, if you watch yeah. any sci-fi movies, you probably go with the latter, which is we're a box of scorpions. You know, even our early sci-fi movies, it's like, yeah, human beings should never go anywhere. We just, we just destroy everything. We're horrible. Yeah. Um, now, can't would other continents, other worlds, other civilizations, do they have access to this place? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I don't believe in UFOs anymore, as in I don't think they're from Venus and Jupiter and Mars and Saturn. Do I think there's stuff up there? Yeah, I've seen it with night vision binoculars all day long. I used to track that stuff for years. The sky is crawling with things, but most people can't see them because they leave their lights off. Funny how UFOs work, you know. The UFOs are kind of like cars. They work just like fine with the headlights off. So, you know, the ones that you see that have their lights on, they want to be seen. The rest of them, they're just flying around. Uh, do they, you know, are they in here with us or are they outside? I don't know. I'd like to think they're trapped in here with us. I th I'd like to think it was a sealed system. Mm. Um, uh, what makes the community believe the, uh, the Antarctica, uh, be the behind Antarctica are other continents? Um... Two things, two reasons. One would be an old Chinese map, and I don't have it, well, I might have it in front of me. Actually, hang on, let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. There was a, um, there was an old Japanese or Chinese map, and I'm seeing if I can dig it up here real fast. It's really, really cool, which shows continents the size of Africa outside, which was really neat. Uh, but if you, even if you don't believe that map, uh, logic would kind of play into it, which is this wouldn't be a one-off. I mean, not only with not the, and I'm, I'm scrolling while I'm talking to you, uh, not yeah. only would uh, we not be the first people to rent this apartment, but why would you only make one of them? Why wouldn't you make multiple in various stages of evolution? That would be the most logical thing for any builder. I mean, you're going to build a whole bunch of these things. 
and then figure out, you know, of course, and the reason is why you want built them, but let's not get into that right this second. But do I, do we think they're out there? Yeah, uh, I do. In fact, I'm, again, I'm still trying to look for this freaking map. But anyway, ask your, oh. ask your next question and we'll, I'll see if I can dig it up. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I've heard this theory that uh, the wall of Antarctica could melt down with uh, the climate change. Yeah. So the theory stated that liberals are trying to stop climate change because we don't want humans to go over Antarctica and explore other, other continents. Uh, so do you? F it's it's not bad for me. Okay. Uh, that's not it's not a bad theory for me though the thing i'm still looking for this damn thing and if i don't get it in here in a second i'll, I'll give up oh there it is cool oh, got it. As, as i said so yeah here let me pop that in there. oh yeah oh, sure. that's going to be in skype your video will screw up for just a second as i click this the oh, um, that's um oh that's cool yeah that's yeah really and cool. what's interesting about that is uh. that particular map has the inner uh. edge and the outer edge of the dome which i thought was fascinating or I should say the, the, the edge of Antarctica and then where the dome is. So, which would be, if you look at, you know, the thickness of that band out there would be thousands of miles thick. You know, it would take a while to make it to the outer rim. Uh, as far as the climate change, and the melting of the ice caps, if it's an automated system, it's going to compensate for a lot of this stuff. Remember, if we're talking about something mechanical or virtual, pretending to be mechanical, you're going the autom there's automated systems in process the underwater conveyor system which transfers water around the jet stream up above the magma system down below and so on and so on um, those systems are going to compensate for whatever's happening on the in the, the the environment inside and human beings though i think are kind of pushing it to its limits it's kind of like um if you brought a propane lantern into a car they had the air conditioning system running. Well, the air conditioning system is going to compensate for it. If you have the air conditioning set at 70, it's going to try to, you know, bring it down to, to 70. You bring in another lantern, another lantern, another lantern. Eventually, you're going to create some weird hot spots and cold spots around that car, which normally shouldn't be there, a.k.a. climate change. And then eventually, that system won't be able to keep up. Eventually, that system is going to fail. Or you're going to have a reset or something's going to go on where it's like, okay, we've got to deal with this. So... Do I think if the, the, the outer rim, the, the ice starts melting, if we're going to start seeing a whole bunch of flooding? Well, we haven't seen it yet. And I know it's a scaling issue and it doesn't take, you know, but it takes a while. And I know there's cities in Florida and the low, lower coastlines that have been suffering and little islands have been getting wiped out. But, but we're not talking, we're, we're not seeing the sea increases that people that we portrayed in the movies. So right now, nobody's panicking. Even though they, they should they should be panicking because 80, 85 percent of the population lives next to the water because that's what yeah. we do. So mm -hmm. I, I, most people in the community don't really care too much. I mean, it's like, yeah, if the melting thing happens, it's fine, but it's not. No one's going to lose any sleep over it. Yeah. And I live in an island and I'm saying that. <laughs> um, why would the government hide the fact that the earth is flat? Oh, that's easy. Fear, mostly. Meaning um, you built an institution for the last 500 years, 500 years, you built up the institution of science to counteract religion and to take us to an age of enlightenment, you know, where, but the thing was power corrupts and always has. Um, and now, and science started taking liberties, you know, like the core of the earth. And then basically science realized that they put their stamp on something, people will believe it. Now, that's a powerful thing. You know, basically, if you wear a lab coat, whatever you say, most of the people out there are going to take it as absolutely legit. So all of a sudden, Flat Earth comes back around and it opens up way too many questions because it's not going to just stop with Flat Earth. If Flat Earth is proven one way, you know, in our way, then you're going to science and you're asking them, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you were wrong about something really, really important. What else yeah. are you wrong about? I don't know. <laughs> Evolution, carbon dating, the Big Bang Theory, uh, dark matter, so on. I mean, it will never end. Science will be on the ropes for years, if not decades. I don't know even know how they'd recover that quickly. So that's a scary, scary thing. Not only that, but uh, let's go into just real quick. Um, it's a three-pronged attack. You're talking about educational, economic, and spiritual. Right. So educational. Think about this. If uh, astrophysics and astronomy would have to close tomorrow, the remaining physical sciences, biology, hydrology, archaeology, geology, on and on. They'd have to be rebuilt from the ground up. 
economically. Oh my God, the stock market is so twitchy as it is. You release something like, you'd have to close down world markets for months just to figure out what it all means. And then spiritually, again, the religious houses, you're asking the major five religious houses of this world, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity, to basically not seek revenge against science. Yeah, what are the odds of that happening? None. So the, between those three things, that's the shortest meeting ever. So if they saw that map, if, let's say that map I sent you, all of a sudden, you know, the government said, oh yeah, by the way, it's real. What do we do? Shall we tell the public? <laughs> no, God, no. I wouldn't no. tell the public, especially <laughs> in 1960, if they, they, we weren't ready for anything. So I think eventually they were working out a plan. You know, you've heard the, the, the saying many times, we'll tell the public when we figure out a way to disseminate the information to where they accept it. And basically we'll, we'll know when they're ready. And now it looks like it's that time. Uh, I don't think we're just doing this on our own. I think we're being helped. Uh, meaning to think about what we have. High-speed internet, social media, 6 billion smartphones. The infrastructure is set up. You could fire off the, you, the same story to all these smartphones simultaneously and get pretty much people on the same page. And all you have to do is tell them and so, say, uh, yes, we knew what the world looked like. We were doing it for your own good because we knew you couldn't hack it. And the, I think there's some truth to that. I mean, I'm not defending the government necessarily in, in everything they do. But think about uh, Roswell. You've heard about that thing, right? Think about yeah. Roswell. Roswell, the, the base commander, if you, if you remember the story, uh, he actually, you know, released, you know, he called the press almost immediately. And all the newspapers in the United, United States and a bunch outside the United States were freaking out. People were freaking out. This was 1947. You know, UFOs yeah. weren't even really that big a thing. People, it was really, really foreign and to people and it scared them. And that's when the Pentagon said, yeah, we got to retract this like right now. And it's like, yep, weather balloon, whew, made a mistake. <laughs> Nothing to see here. That's fine. So no, they learned their lessons. And in 1960, when they figured out that this map was real, they said, yeah, we're just going to hold on to it. And, and honestly, if you guys, I mean, I, I know you're younger, but th and you believe in transparency, but think about it in 1960. If you have all of a sudden given that information, somebody handed you this map. So yeah, by the way, it's not this, it's that. <laughs> Yeah. You'd, yeah, you'd, sit, you'd sit down and you'd say, okay, what's the worst that could happen? And then you start rattling off some of that stuff. I said at the end, you're like, yeah, there's no one, no one would admit, you know, it'd be like, yeah, no one. In fact, anyone that thinks about doing this, don't even think about it. We'll kill you. So yeah. anyway, but, um, how do you think people started to believe uh, the herb was round, like in the time of the Greek? Uh, no, it, yeah. it, the, here's the problem. And I know people go back to the Greek thing, you know, the, the um, Aristophanes and the sticks versus shadow argument and all that. Yeah. The problem oh, yeah. with that is, oh. is that if you go back and say, well, they, they knew it was around there. It's like, yeah, but if you, if, yeah, you, you want to try to come up with a sphere argument, but it's a sphere with no map at all. Remember, they didn't have any, any map of anything. I mean, you had a map of, I think the continent you were on and even those were terrible. So it really, honestly, I mean, that's why I kind of focused on the whole Copernican model, which is why, you know, it's called the Copernican model. You know, it's he, a bunch of fuzzy math and then it works a lot of, a lot of ridiculous speeds, but I think it was also introduced by whoever built this place. I don't think, you know, mankind just immediately changed, you know, every culture that we knew of, including the Greeks and the early Greeks f drew a domed flat structure because that's what you saw the stars moved at the night during the night the ground didn't so that's what you went with but i believe that whoever built this place also put that into effect because you remember if uh the, the most interesting stuff we've done has been in the last 500 years it buys you time because once people find out and i said this in the clues i don't know if you even watched the clues but the, but the problem with humanity is they're, they're very very curious they're worse than cats you know, curiosity killed the cat. The humans are way worse. Meaning a, yeah. a perfect example would be the wildlife preserve, which is why I used it in the clues. And that is you take a thousand acre wildlife preserve, put some buffalo in it. They're happy. Couldn't be happier. Some water, grass, trees. They don't care about the fence. Who cares? We're happy. You put humans in that same thousand acre fence, you know, thousand acres, a lot of room. All they care about is the fence. 
It's all I hear. So who, where's the, why is the fence here? Why am I on this side of the fence? What's on the other side of the fence? Who made the mm-hmm. fence? Did I anger the fence? Maybe we should sacrifice things to the fence. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. The next thing you know, there's a bunch of churches going to war with each other over who is appeasing the fence. That's what we are. So make it a globe. <laughs> solves that you get rid of the fence you make the fence invisible you tell people there is no fence fence what fence that that was the point five before that point remember if you were the king of france in say 1400s you had wooden ships and you had horses even if you had that map over there that that i showed you you can't do anything with it there's nothing you can do i mean the the you have no you have no way of just only until the internal combustion engine came out around 1900 and when the first planes came out could we actually do it we've only even had the ability to explore this place for the last basically 100 years and that's not a lot in our civilization 5,000 roughly years of unbroken history so anyway sorry i ramble um yeah that's cool um do you think we can uh, see some big flutter project in the future, like sailing to the ice wall or building a small rocket or something? Ice wall, probably not because of the Antarctic Treaty, which that in itself is just weird. Yeah. You know, the, the, the permits involved, if you know, I can send you a copy of the treaty if you want to look it over. It's brutal. Again, find me another piece of real estate anywhere in the world that isn't yeah. owned by anybody. Um, rockets would be a better thing. I mean, there's some amateur rockets that have gone up to 70 miles. I think that's the world record right now. It's not really high. Um, rockets might be able to help us, but you got to remember as you get bigger in scope, you're going to need engineers to do it. And where those engineers are going to come from sooner or later, you're going to get infiltrated by, by one of the major groups. You got to remember that like the, the private space companies, and they have not been around that long, SpaceX, um, Blue Horizons and Virgin Galactic. There, you know, where do you think, who, who do you think works for those? You know, how'd they get their engineers? They recruited them straight from NASA. You know, they're all people that just jump ship to work for a private company. Well, how hard would it be to put in a NASA engineer that wanted to sabotage a few things? Look up how many rockets all those groups have just destroyed for no apparent reason. I mean, it's 2019. We should be able to have good rockets by now. And nobody's going anywhere. Yeah. Um... One of the last questions, uh, how big is the sun relative to the moon? Same size, the, same size. Same size. Um, so the sun and the moon, we're guessing would be less than 50 miles each um, across, which is why the moon fits so well in front of the sun, even though... 50 or 15? 50. 50. 50, okay, thank you. Which also goes into one of my um, five bullet points that I throw at people, which is the eclipse shadow is too small. Um, real quick, so the eclipse... When the uh, the moon goes in front of the sun, the moon's supposedly 2,000 miles wide, uh, but the shadow on the ground on the earth is only 70 miles wide. And I say that that should be strike people as weird because that's you walking by a wall and your shadow gets down to the, about the size of an action figure. And you say, well, no, it, it convexes the shadow. It's an atmospheric thing. It, it turns it like a shadow magnifying glass. And I go, okay, fine. If that's the case, then the exact same thing should happen for the Earth. Because the Earth is 8,000 miles wide. If the Earth goes in front of the sun and the moon's on the other side, there should be a blackout zone at least four times as large on the moon. So a big black circle would be about 250 miles wide. You wouldn't even need binoculars to see it. Never happens. We see a blood red moon. We see the waxing and waning crescents. We never see this little circle going across the moon. Why? Why, why does it happen? And, and you say, yeah. well, what's your point? And my point is, well, it works way better from our model than it does the heliocentric. They say it's 2,000 miles wide. We say it's about 50 miles wide. Blackout zone, 70 miles wide. Ours is about 50 miles wide. Remember, shadows in real life down here only are actual size or bigger. They never get smaller. Your shadow is never smaller than you. It's always same size or bigger. So, there you go. Um, I, I, I didn't understand what you uh, thought UFOs were. Oh, uh, what, oh no, I, I, never, I never answered it. Um, I think UFOs, do I think there's other civilizations lying around? Yes, I do. Um, and by that, I think UFOs are just older versions of us. Uh, and we've had sci-fi novels that have talked about this forever. Uh, which is between, I don't think we're the first people to rent this apartment. I mean, come on, we know there's ancient structures 
that are all over the place. So, like, you know, the, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids. Go, there, go to the real pyramids sometime and actually stand, look at it, and then look at Cairo and tell me those people built it. Or the or the the, yeah, the okay. grandfathers of those people built it. We couldn't build this thing now, and they're saying, "Oh yeah, we built this." It's like, what? Are you kidding me? Um, there are ancient civilizations that have been around for a long, long time, and I think there's remnants that still are hanging around. So between, I think there's a transition period from civilization to civilization, like a graduating class. You know, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay in school anymore. You got to go somewhere else, maybe subterranean, maybe outside the dome. I don't know. And, but I think there's remnants. I think they have high tech. I think they're all using unified field engines, which by the way, if you had a unified field engine, which is basically a UFO engine, anti-gravity engine, you would be able to figure out this place in two seconds, which is why we're, yeah. we're not allowed to do it. Even though we talked about this for decades over in the States, our future, right? Flying cars, right? That was supposed to be our future. There was, there was so many things in the future we didn't get. Robot servants and cloning things and instant meals and stuff basically at like the fifth element movie and it never ever yeah. happened the only thing we got was high speed information technology which seems to be working against them or maybe it's working for them at this point but anyway you, the short version i i think they're just older versions of us because i think when we when our civilization finally you know augers into the ground uh i think that we'll have remnants lying around what but here's here's the fun part whatever whoever's out there i think there's rules i don't think whoever who, the older civilizations are allowed to interact with us directly kind of like prime directive in star trek because it, they'd influence yeah. us too much you you don't see any of these things flying around never ever they never land in main street anywhere in downtown anywhere get out take a few selfies sign a few oh, autographs yeah. shake hands and leave because they'd influence people too much are you kidding it would be the greatest story ever it's like oh my god yeah. because the questions would never end people would be who are you where are you from where are you and just blah 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 it would never ever end so they're allowed they're not allowed to talk to us which is why last thing on on this part you want to have some fun what's the greatest ufo sighting of all time do you guys know um i think um I know a few, but I think Roswell. No, would maybe. No, that's that's uh, it's the no. second. It's the second one. The the second. biggest one. Well, and you can look this up in in wiki. It is fascinating. Look up the fifteen sixty one Nuremberg event. Okay. More, beautiful spring morning, not a cloud in the sky. Nuremberg, Germany, right? Big city at the time. Two massive space armadas, basically flying aircraft carriers, park themselves over these this thing, and just start duking it out for a full hour. Full hour, these people, they're just slugging it out. Things are crashing, you know, they, they, they you know, there's two distinct factions. You know, people, and an hour's a long time. I mean, you can finish your breakfast, you eat your toast and schnitzengluben and whatever else. And there's no cameras, though. So the sketch artists came out, they're sketching the whole thing, and it was brilliant. And they put it in their newspapers, but there was no science fiction back in 1561. So they have no concept, they have no frame of reference. So they describe it as some sort of religious event. Now here's the end. It was funny though. At the end of that hour, after these two are just going at it, a third faction shows up. A giant singular black ship pulls up right between them. Two ships, you know, the, the two factions freak out, take off. Black ship sits there for a while, and then pulls off. Do you have any questions that freaking raises? Uh, I don't know. Who are the two factions in the first place? Who was the third faction? What are the power tiers? Were they the cops? Were they the UN? And of course, my big one is like, what took them so long? A full hour? That's no response yeah. time. So yeah, and people just gloss over it. I mean, it was on Ancient Aliens briefly, but there was like multiple seasons before they finally released that. And they still, even when the Ancient Aliens brought it up, they didn't release that third faction. I was wondering why. Because it makes it much more interesting, much more credible. But look it up if you get a chance. The, the newspapers that are still in the museums today are absolutely out there. It's beautiful. Um, you thought the, uh, these were the older civilizations uh, of us? Yes. Uh, where do they live? Now? Uh, yeah, if like... it was me, well, there's only, again, only two choices. They are either live outside, well, they could live on that map in some of those continents that are outside if you really wanted to, or they could be subterranean, which is, uh, why not? Think of it this way underground you think oh wow, you can't make a cave big enough it's like really because who's to say we're not subterranean technically you could put this entire building underground uh, the uh, if there's civilization men if you even had a subterranean cavern that was only 100 miles high 
that is not very big, you know, in comparison to everything else. You could put civilization down there, they'd be happy as clams. That's where I'd put them. If so, if they're trapped in here with us, they're underground. If they're not trapped in here with us, they're on one of those continents that's outside. And by the way, yeah. another reason why I like that map, mm-hmm. I don't know how accurate it is, but I love the concept, is that none of those continents are linked to each other. They're completely isolated. So that in any sort of, so they're, they've basically self-contained. They, you know, they, they uh, to, to interact with each other, you have to have technology to move from island to island. So. Okay. Uh, so a little bit on the Behind the Curve documentary, sure. but we both saw it. Sure. Uh, I liked it, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. Thanks. But we heard at the conference that, you know, the makers of the documentary weren't flat earthers. Oh, they're definitely and not flat earthers. They, they, they hate flat, flat earth. earth. And they kind of made a, made a documentary in a way to more mock flat earth than, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't supposed a, to be that way. They initially, okay. and you can you can read some of the director's interviews that he did. Uh, initially, it was supposed to be a human interest piece. I mean, I was the first person they, yeah. they reached out to for this thing. And, uh, you know, I spent seven months with these guys off and on. And it was supposed mm-hmm. to be it was supposed to be a human interest piece. And what happened was when we got to the conference, and I don't know how many times you watched it, but check out the conference when that 12 year old kid walks up to the microphone. And he starts asking me questions. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. When he did that, that's when the director and the producers s- decided they had to take a stand because up until that point they were going to remain completely neutral. But in fact, I only know this, they didn't tell me. I only know this because that was in the director's commentary on the iTunes version. Once that happened, uh-oh, you guys frozen? Your machine froze. Uh-oh, you guys did. Can you see me? You're frozen on your side. Okay, now you're back. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay, no worries. Yeah, no, no, it's good. I was, I was just, yeah. I, I, I saw you typing. Okay, so real yeah. quick. Okay. Um, yeah. What happened was, uh, where did I leave off? So the director, the, the iTunes version. That's what I was saying, right? Yeah. Okay, so the iTunes version basically said that when that 12-year-old kid got involved, that that's when they had to take a stand. And they all agreed. I mean, the editor, the producers, it's like everyone was unanimous. Like, oh, no, this is when we're going after Flat Earth. It's like, And the reason was because, well, it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. It's like, really? It's like, oh, yeah, you can say whatever you want. But if you're messing with the future, if you're messing with impressionable minds, then then you really somebody should stop you. And so, But the problem was they had already shot most of the movie. It was almost done. So they couldn't go back and reshoot it, so they had to tweak it in editing. So that's when they decided to go after Jaron, who gave him an opening. They went after Bob a little bit. There wasn't much they could do with me or Patricia or Nathan or, or Chris or those guys. Um, but yeah, even to this day, in fact, even to this day, I heard an interview he did, I think like just a few months ago. Director still thinks that I don't believe it, that I'm just doing it for fame. It's like, oh yeah, because mm-hmm. flat Earth. That's exactly what you want to get into. You want to, you want to get made fun of on a regular basis. I, I love, I love that. <laughs> but he, but, but that's denial. I mean, you know, the five stages of acceptance. You know, denial, um, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. He will not come out of it. He cannot believe that this is a thing, which is ironic because his movie tells people that exact same thing. It's like he, there's, he shows people, yeah, it's absolutely a thing, but he himself. Still, he was in the conference. He was there with us the entire Raleigh conference. Hundreds and hundreds of people. And he wouldn't, uh, he just would not believe that, that people were, you know, he's, he's so stuck in it, he, he can't break out. It's like, all right, that's fine. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I think that was almost it. Um, I have... Yeah, yeah. I have one question uh, on the documentary. So in the ending, there was an experiment with the lasers and the, right. which could either prove the Earth was a square or flat. Right. So the did the makers kind of yes. made it? Yeah. Like, the, 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 well, okay. It wasn't just the director. And that was, yeah, the director absolutely was not going to show us in a favorable light on that experiment. As a matter of fact, he went even so far to uh, not tell anybody that during the first version of that, they melted the laser. They melted the conden- condenser. They just, you know, he, he wouldn't even ex- let that be explained. But yeah. to be yeah. fair, Jaron, uh, the guy that was doing the experiment, 
he did screw up because he never practiced that experiment. He never even checked the the land that he was shooting on to make sure he had line of sight. He never is like, oh, well, we'll just do it live the first time. What's the worst that could happen? And it's like, dude, you, you never, ever do that. And he, he understood. And he understands now. In fact, he said this on air many times. It's like, never, ever do an experiment yeah. for the first time live. And that's why you always do, like, dry rehearsals. Even the every awards show, you ever, you know, they do dry rehearsals for everything. And he didn't. And so, in fact, he didn't even he didn't even know until months later because people kept giving him grief. He finally drove out there during the daytime and was do it was um uh it was like, Oh wow, I don't have line of sight. It's like now you're telling us the documentary's been out forever. You never bothered to check if you even had line of sight. Basically what I'm saying is the ground wasn't even level that he went out there to do it on. He just assumed it was because Google Earth said it was. He never even checked. He just went out there at night, never bought And it's like, oh, we'll just shoot it with the camera team. And the reason why the director, it was so easy to tear Jaren apart was he did it twice. He did it the first time, and then he, he brought up the director the second time after the conference. He says, oh, no, no, I got it this time. We'll totally, you know, we'll, we'll, oh, they botched it again. It's like, oh, you're killing me. So the director, it was almost too irresistible for him to, to do it. Now, should he have done, would I have changed anything? People say, would you have changed anything in the documentary if you could make it yourself? Yeah, I would have changed the ending. Even though the audiences that left the theaters that I was in, because I got to see it in multiple showings in different cities and, and Canada, um, they laughed. You know, they felt safe knowing at the end that it's like, oh, okay, it's probably not flat. And yeah. even though the, the average person on the street, I mean, 99 out of 100 people in that room didn't even know what the experiment was doing. And because I, I asked them, I said, I said, what, I go, what happened? They go, something, wa something wrong, something went wrong. I go, do you know what went wrong? No, I had no freaking idea what that experiment was about. Because again, the average person doesn't know engineering or math or physics. And so it, again, it worked out for us because by the time you got to the 100 minutes of that movie, by the time you got to the end, you were so blown by. It's like, what? You know, people are doing drugs going, what is happening, man, that they they didn't understand. And it worked in our benefit. And we got a whole, I mean, my email load doubled literally within like a week after that movie coming out on Netflix. So, hey, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it as a win and uh, we'll see what happens with the next one. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, next one there will. Oh, another... I guarantee. So, well, well, like for example, Mad Mike had a documentary just made up about him. You know that rack, that rocket guy that launched in the California desert. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was, he was. Well, he, I won't say he was necessarily one of ours. He came to us for money. And we said, "Fine, we'll finish oh, your rocket. Yeah. Uh, just put our flat Earth sticker on the side." And he's like, "Okay." He knew nothing about flat Earth when he put that sticker on the side. He just wanted fame and girls. It's all he wanted. It's like, uh, but he didn't. He wasn't like a full flat earther. No, right? I don't think because... he still is a full flat earther. I think. Oh no! Yeah. No, he. It, there's there's been people riding our coattails for some time now. I mean, the, ever just about every major channel in on YouTube has covered us at one point. I knew it was bad when PewDiePie put me on a thumbnail. That's when you know you're in trouble because it's like you know he he was he was pretty huge even though he hated flat Earth. But I'll take I'll take that too. It's like hey, want to talk about flat Earth? Great. Don't care. Yeah. Mm. Um, when was that PewDiePie video? Was it about flat Earth? Oh, or... just type in uh, type in uh, PewDiePie flat Earth. PewDiePie, okay. PewDiePie we'll flat Earth. It okay. Yeah. Um, sure. And you'll so you'll, it's you'll my... see it. Oh. Uh, okay. So it's my last question. Um, is it? Do you think, um, in hindsight, is it worth to come out as a flat earther? Is it worth it to come out as a flat earther? Yeah. Oh, you know, would I do it? Would I do it over again? Yeah, yeah, I would. Um, because I don't think I had a choice. Uh, when I, because I didn't come out as a flat earther, I just, like a lot of people, I came out and said, I can't prove the globe anymore. And yeah. then hoping that someone say, oh, no, you can prove it, like, you know, via this and via this. And, you know, uh, to this day, I, did it disrupt my life? Yes, it did. Do I do this 24 7? Yeah, I do. Um, has it changed my social life? Yeah, it has. Um, but it has given me the chance to do things I never, ever thought I would do. And it shouldn't be that way. Um, uh, people have heard me say this before, but if I live long enough to write an autobiography, it's literally going to be called unsolicited. Meaning I didn't even have to pick up the phone. 
all of a sudden I had, you know, Google contacts me and says, hey, you might want to monetize your channel because you're doing pretty well. Um, a book publisher out of London says, hey, can we turn your stuff into a book? Okay, documentary. Okay, can we do a documentary? Yeah, sure. TV interviews. Um, I just did a commercial in Australia for a mobile yeah. app where they called yeah. me up and said, hey, we'd like to fly you down and shoot a commercial. How would you like to come down? It's like, you know, and, and it's basically, um, if you remember the, uh, the old Geico commercials, so easy a caveman could do it. This is kind of a version of that. It was a few years ago. Um, this is kind of like that. So easy, even a flat earther can do it. I literally, you know, held a phone in my hand, you know, for two days and shot. And it's like, oh yeah, love, love flat, you know, love, love flat earth, love your app. And they paid me to do this. I mean, how does this happen? So would I, would I, would I change it again? Would I do it over again? Uh, yeah, I do it over and again in a second. I mean, I've done like for this year, quick, real quick, we've done conferences just this year. We're on tour now. Uh, we did Calgary, Los Angeles, um, UK, Auckland, Stockholm. Uh, and then I just, just got back from South Carolina and the last one's in Dallas, Texas. Full-blown conferences. How does that happen? How are flat earth conferences happening all over the place? Uh, how are we on the cover of popular science right now? In fact, did you even hear it? In fact, here, let me... Uh, here, I'll give this to you real fast. One second. Speech. Here. Watch this. That's in the newsstands right now. This is Newsweek. Three months ago. And many, many more. I could I could do this all day. How 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 is this possible? This is this here. I'll, I'll give you another one. This is um this is a conference in South Korea. I didn't even go to that one. How weird is freaking that? Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, big, it's yeah. it's yeah. nutty yeah. out there. And of course, yeah. you know, if, yes. to back again, here, let's end it with this. This is my, uh, I mean, this is a logo that was done for me. I don't even have to do most of this stuff. <laughs> Flyers the University, it's metaphorical, but it's real. I mean, we do this. In fact, uh, the last last shot I'm giving you right there, I know the video probably screwed up when I put that up, is an Apollo 12 shot. And that and that's for anyone that believes in the Americans went to space. And so I just, that's just a random Apollo 12 shot. And I say, find me, you know, I can see at least six things wrong <laughs> with that shot. Uh, engineering, uh, physics, uh, doing with light and gravity and splay patterns. The longer you look at that, the more you realize. And it's high res, you can zoom in on it. The longer you look at it, the worse it gets. And the question is why? How is that possible? It's a real shot. It's the Americans. They wouldn't lie. It's the American government? No, we're absolutely legit about everything. Except, you but know. Did they lie um, because they uh, uh, earned money from that? or We pay, the budget we give NASA is currently around $54 million a day. That's a lot. Okay. And Damn. what can you do with fifty more million dollars a day? Well, you can spend some of it to create some rockets that go nowhere, and then the rest of it you can use for black projects, or whatever you want. Um, so the money is good. Now, does it create jobs? Yeah, it does. I mean, there's a benefit there. There's lots of people that work for NASA that don't know anything. In fact, you could have ninety-nine percent of the, the NASA workers know nothing about this. All you really, the only guys that need to know are the telemetry guys, the guys that that say, okay, here's where the rocket is now. That data has to be faked. The rest of it, though, once it gets out of visual range, pff, take over the telemetry and that's it. Same goes with any space program. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. So anyway, what else? Any, any parting shots? Oh, yeah. So um, do you know how many flat earthers are there? Millions. Millions Million? and millions. I'll give you a real quick. In fact, uh, you can look this up. Look this one up if you get a chance. There was a u.gov survey, u.gov. Type in u.gov flat earth results you'll find the uh, the articles on it it was a survey done in 2017 where um there's a british research and this is not isn't us this is a science research group that tracked us down because they wanted to know how many americans believed in flat earth they asked a whole bunch of americans and as they were going through the demographics they realized as they got younger and younger it was skewing more and more towards us to when they got to the youngest group that they can ask the 18 to 24s they were skewing a full, I think, 34% against the globe. 
34 yeah. percent that yeah. is a huge yeah. amount yeah and and, and, yeah. and granted yeah. people younger people are more pliable but that's the reason why like for example national geographic got a hold of me they said that uh which is why they sat down and they said you know isn't it possible that flat earth could bring apart the you know a uh, about the new dark age so imagine that right the 18 to 34s uh there was a russian study done and these are just the russians that admitted were like three percent every percentage point in the united states is what three and a half million that's that's just in the united states and we're not talking about the 1824s we're just talking overall there but the problem is is that 90 percent of our membership is still in the closet meaning so like yeah. if the gay population is half in the closet 50 percent in 50 percent out we're 90 percent in the closet because people are worried about friends and family and co-workers same thing with anything else so especially co-workers i've talked to a lot of these people i get emails from them every day i have talked to captains of industry i have talked to a-listers i have talked to people that i can't even out because they say sorry we can't we can't i we don't want to be outed mostly because and i'll show you real fast because of real quick do, 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 because of this guy right here, the shorter guy, Kyrie Irving. Of course, the bigger guy is LeBron James. Kyrie yeah, Irving came yes. out as yeah. one of ours, and he got grilled. He is still being grilled. Uh, because, But when he came out, he felt he had nothing to lose. Because remember, um, he had already won his championship. He was best friends with that guy right there. He had his ring. He was 24, 25. I think he was 25. And... He has his own shoe company. He was making millions. Well, he didn't realize that the, that when you're an athlete, the journalists have access to you after every game. And you play 100 games a year when you're in the NBA. So every every time, it's like nobody wants to hear about offense and defense. It's like, tell us about flat earth. And he was just getting grilled. So anyway, there's a lot of people out there that won't come out yet because of what's happening to him. They keep saying me, telling me the same thing. It's like, we need more people on the dance floor before we're you know you don't want to look like an idiot out there and so but we're, we're close we're really really close there's some mainstream media people all it's going to take is one show and that'll be it and the documentary has gotten us gotten us almost there documentary gave the media an excuse to cover it as a topic without even you know making it sound super super strange but once we get some sort of mainstream story that's when we'll hit well that's what i what i call critical mass yeah, okay. So anyway, the short version is millions and millions. Do I have any real idea? No, but there's a lot more than you think. Again, the scary numbers, look up the u.gov survey. It is frightening. It, 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 it spooked the hell out of National Geographic. They were they didn't know what to do with it. Because remember, science doesn't... They, in fact, it got so bad that there were scientists, science groups that were going after u.gov saying, well, you're doing it wrong. You, the survey can't be right. And it's like, what are you talking about? This is what we do is we're doing, we do surveys. In fact, we're with you. Why are you yelling? It's like, well, you, the numbers must be wrong. Like, no, they're not. They're absolutely right. I mean, it doesn't make sense because remember, kids believe what they're told. And if they're seeing more stuff on social media that says they're flat earth, the scary numbers isn't the 18 to 24s. It's the 12 to 17s. I've talked to them. I've talked to guys way younger than you. You know, they, they call up and I've interviewed personally with them. And yeah, the kids are like, yeah, why not? You know, Shane Dawson said so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seriously. Sure. Look up. Shane Dawson has our number one video right now. It's got 32 million hits when he did a thing on Flat Earth. It was monstrous. Do you yeah, know? I think I, uh, we watched it. Yeah. yeah, we saw it. Yeah. He explained or it was his brother, right? Who explained. Yeah, exactly. The whole flat yep. Earth. I, I, get a chance, yeah. I get a chance to go down there. They called me right afterwards and said uh, hey come down to la and so i spent a couple days with his brother well his shane was with jeffree star because that's his new thing and did you see by the way so they're doing a makeup line because that's yeah. what they do yeah. did you see what the, the makeup line one of the colors no, one of the I colors really one of the that. colors is literally called flat earth not oh, really? oh yeah not kidding what? it's a it's a light that's light blue and it's like, Lightless. wow, really? But anyway, yeah. So I, I spent time with um, his brothers, Jared, uh, down in L.A. And we shot in the very same studio that, that they shot the um, uh, that video with. And it, it yeah. you, people, people don't understand. It's like for the younger crowd, guys like PewDiePie, more Shane Dawson than PewDiePie, uh, it, which is they, you know, they're considered, you know, basically their news source. It's like whatever opinion those guys have. It's like, oh yeah, I'm totally with you. You know, the peer pressure yeah. is monstrous. You know, he has so many subs, 
that of course they're going to go with them. So and people, you know, I, I worked it into my speech. It's like, look, you know, you get 30 million hits on something. It's going to, you know, and most of them are likes. People are going to listen. It's like, yeah, I'm open-minded to it. So yeah, the 12 to 17, basically, sorry, the short version is we have the kids. We have the children at this point and the the one day i'm probably going to be called in to testify in some sort of government thing because they're going to be, going to be upset about this like look i'm not trying social media did that i didn't call up shane dawson said run our video no anyway uh yeah so do you have a question uh yeah so with our research is there any like website or app or person or something we should search or visit or contact yes to uh, help us? first off i would go to you want a cool little app for your phone that you, you could have people click on uh go to the sun and moon zodiac clock app so um, i think we do you have that uh, one some, by d-i-t-r-h zodiac clock. sun and moon zodiac clock yes clock app. Uh, someone told now us, if I you think, want yeah. that's that's a really fun one da david wise from d-i-t-r-h uh he did a fantastic job with that um, now, if you want links to easy to follow videos that aren't mine, let me show you real quick. Hang on. I'll give you the link. Drop it in here. Short. It's called the Flat Earth Shortlist for New People. And I highly recommend this for everybody. Is the easy stuff to understand. And of course, yeah, the first video is Shane Dawson's video. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of great stuff in there. There's moonlight experiments. There's sunlight experiments. There's long distance photography. Um, it covers basically, and I put it all in one playlist. I think it's only about 20 long. The videos will range from four minutes to an hour, depending on what they're into. And it, I'm, it, it absolutely will brief them on everything. And by the way, okay. afterwards, after I'm done, I will email you. In fact, put your best email in the box right here. And, oh, yeah. and in yeah. the chat box, and I will send you the audio, the bootleg version of the audio of that book that I showed you. Uh, oh, that, thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm happy to do it. And you can use you can use whatever quote you want from that, um, and whatever audio clip from it. The because uh, I don't mm -hmm. think it's out on Audible's yet. No, my publisher can when she catches up, she'll catch up. The um, the the reason is it's a retrospective of what's happened over the last four years. Basically, it's it's how we got here. It's like, if you want to know why you guys are talking to me right now, this will encapsulate a lot of it for you. Um, do yeah. you mind us uh, taking a picture of the, uh, for a project? This, just a screen, you a know, screenshot. Yeah. Sure, from what do you want me to do? Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, here, here. Okay, let's take a picture. Yeah. Yes. And. Okay. Yeah, There's just one more, one more. Oh, for that. yeah. No? Okay. Is that crash? Oh, I said crash. How's that? Oh, uh, you're frozen. I don't know why. The Wi Fi. No. Uh, are you screen? still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. The screen is just frozen then. Are you Maybe sure I'm frozen should... or am I just sitting still? No, no, no. <laughs> you're, actually, you're frozen. You're frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. am I? Do you want me to tweak my video real quick? Yeah. Okay, hang on one second. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, I'll, I'll kill the video and come back. Yeah, thank you. And sure. how about now? Yeah. Better? That's great. Yeah. yeah. Better, okay. yes. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we'll do that too with uh, right. flat sign. And flat sign. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for this interview. We we learned a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very no, interesting Happy stuff. to do it. Yeah. Happy do it. It's uh, really great that you uh, yeah had time for us. So thanks a lot. And um, maybe if we have more questions, uh, can we contact you again? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Whatever you guys need. Um, if you want to talk to anybody else, uh, by all means, just just think of who it is. I mean, there's a bunch of people in the video list I just sent you. And yeah. uh, again, put your put your email in that um, in the box, or or email me directly, and I will shoot you off the audio thing as soon as I'm done. Okay. Yeah, uh, we'll put our email in the chat. Cool. Well, we'll do okay. that. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, see you guys. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye-bye.